welcome. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So we come to our confession where we say sorry to God. In baptism, we died with Christ so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us and bring us back to ourselves through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory. 
glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To God be glory forever. to God, glory to Christ Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah, Amen. And so we come to uh, the collect for this day. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gives the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and the source of goodness, through him who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 15, verse 9 to 17. Glory to you, O Lord. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's about this time in the Easter season, the fifth Sunday, that we might begin to think, are we still in Easter? 
The chocolate and the roast lamb seem like a distant memory, and yet we are still in Easter. This Sunday is the Sunday to reignite and maybe re-engage. This Sunday is the day we refer to as Rogation Sunday. The next few days are Rogation Days, days during which we focus our requests to God for a good and bountiful harvest in the fields and in our lives. Thursday is Ascension Day. After 40 days of appearing to his disciples and others, eating, walking and talking, the risen Jesus ascends to heaven, a semicolon between his ministry and ours. Ten days after that, we're at Pentecost Sunday, the giving of the Spirit and the beginning of what we now call the Christian Church. All of this is to come. There is plenty of life left in Easter. Today, though, Rogation Sunday is often used as a chance to turn our focus towards nature, to give thanks to God and, in particular, remember the farming community and their part in our complex society. It's a moment to remember, before we think about the birth of the church in 10 days, that the God we follow is the God of all creation. A moment to remember that it's not all about me or even about the church because a God of all creation is all about everything and everybody. We're learning, perhaps too late, that our well-being, yours and mine and all of humanity's, is directly and intimately connected to the well-being of the environment. And that after a century and a half of what we might now want, call want, wanton abuse, the environment, our environment, is damaged and broken. We have a long way to go to rebuild our relationship with the environment, our environment. We'll need more than an annual Rogation Sunday. Thankfully, we are doing more than that, and we should keep on encouraging each other to keep going. We're also learning, perhaps also too late, that my well-being and your well-being is dependent on our well-being, the well-being of everyone. If the God we follow is the God of all creation, if the God we follow sent his only son because he loved the world so much, if the God we follow is graceful enough to notice me, just take a moment to say that for yourself. If the God we follow is graceful enough to notice me, the broken, damaged, selfish, hurting, shamed and lonely me, if I am to be included in the welcome acceptance of a God who loved the world so much, if I am the recipient of grace and love, then how do I manage to maintain a position that excludes others? Let's consider Peter. He was brought up in a society of very strict rules of who was in and who was out. He knew that he was out. He was out because of his profession, his family business of being fisher folk. He was now doubly out because he was a follower of the discredited Messiah who was crucified and supposedly risen from the dead. Peter's whole brain was wired to think about who was in and who was out. And it takes example after example of inclusive grace to convince him otherwise. We get a glimpse of that in our reading from Acts today. Acts is some of the recorded history of the early church, the very early church, right after Jesus had risen and the disciples were working out what happens next. Through a dream and a vision, and a messenger God had managed to get Peter in front of a senior figure in the Roman army, Cornelius, 
and his household. Some people who were definitely out. People who were definitely outside of any blessing that God might give. And definitely not people that Peter would want to be caught talking to. Even so, Peter was in the middle of explaining what he had witnessed with Jesus dying and rising when the Holy Spirit shows up and fills Cornelius and the whole household. I know that just the end of that sentence, the Holy Spirit shows up and fills Cornelius with his house and his household, will provoke a lot of questions and perhaps uncertainty. We don't have time to explore that today. However, even with only a whisper of understanding of what that means. The point is this, it's exactly what had happened to Peter and the other disciples and 3,000 people at Pentecost just a few weeks earlier for him. The point for Peter that is that if God had included me, the broken, damaged, selfish, hurting and shamed fisherman, then why would he not also include these people? Who am I to say they are out when they are clearly in? Rogation Sunday is a day to remember that God is the God of all creation, everything and everyone. When I am struggling to include someone, I should remember that God has already included them. There is nothing that should separate them from the grace and love of God. Not my own sensibilities, or my social position, or my intellectual stance, or my political persuasion, or what I think about ethnicity and gender and sexuality, poverty, language, accent, dress code, education or religion. Nothing should separate them. If God has included them, then who am I to say or act differently? You are in. You're welcome. Come and eat and drink and celebrate. For the grace of God is abundant and soothing and full of peace.
And now we come to our creed where we state what we believe. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel passage contains Jesus' commandment to us to love him and to love one another as he loves us. So, Heavenly Father, please help us to show that love to all, even when it is not reciprocated. Please show us how we can translate that love into practical service in your name. We pray for our schools, for the teachers and the children, as they are back together seeking to make up for lost time. And we especially pray for those who will be leaving primary school for secondary school or secondary school for further education after this end of this term facing difficulties because of the lack of opportunity to become really up to speed. And loving Father, we pray for your healing, healing on people, situations, nations, as we go through this pandemic. We pray especially for the country of India, which has been on our television screen so much this last week, struggling with a lock, lock, lack of essential equipment, and for those in this country of their nation who are seeking to help them in whatever way they can, we ask you please to strengthen a sense of oneness in our leaders as they balance domestic needs with the wider needs of the global community. Dear Lord, we lift up to you our Sovereign Lady, our Queen, as she continues to mourn the loss of her husband, her rock, Thank you that she has such a dedication to you and to her people and is now able to resume her normal duties. Please be with her as she does this. Finally, Heavenly Father, we pray for our communities, for our churches and the Stroud team under Rector Kate. We pray for discernment of your plans for our future. Discernment as we decide whether things should be done within or without our places of worship. Help us to be able to balance the two aspects following the lockdown period when so many people are used now to watching their worship services online. And Lord, shower your blessings upon us, we pray, in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And summoning all our prayers together, we pray the words that our Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
And now we come to the blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within us, we go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you.